There are many things that are different about this mass under our conditions of uh, social distancing and rule of ten. And one of the things which those gathered here tonight are going to really appreciate is that we can't have any ushers. That would be stretching the rule of ten, so there's not going to be a collection. It's a wonderful day to be church. So uh, the, the gospel that we have is one of the, the four gospel stories about the resurrection. And each of the evangelists has a different way of presenting it. And, and they're, they're, it's really a fascinating story as it unfolds because they are each distinct, each different. In the Gospel of Matthew, which we heard last Sunday, we had Jesus appearing to Mary Magdalene and having her go to tell the disciples to go to Galilee where he will meet them. They go to Galilee, and it's, Galilee's about 50 miles north of Jerusalem, and so it probably took a day or two for them to get up there. But they get there, he instructs them, he sends them, and then he's taken from their midst, he rises up into heaven. So the resurrection, between the resurrection and the ascension in Matthew's version, is maybe a day or two. In Mark, Jesus arises, he appears to his disciples, he commissions them, and then is taken up. So it sounds in Mark's version that the, res the ascension takes place on the same day as the re resurrection. Luke encounters the two people, Cleopas and his companion, on the road to Emmaus. Then they go back to Jerusalem, to the upper room. They tell the disciples they've seen the Lord. The Lord appears in their midst. He eats fish with them. He blesses them, commissions them, and then takes them out to where he ascends into heaven. It sounds like it's in the same evening or maybe the next morning. In John, we have Jesus appearing to his disciples behind locked doors on that first Easter Sunday. Then a week later, he appears to them a second time. And then at an indeterminate time down the road, he appears to them while they're fishing. So we don't know what John's version was. It's only when you get to the Acts of the Apostles that Luke explicitly states that Jesus made appearances and instructed his disciples for 40 days after he rose from the dead and then ascended into heaven. So you've got this panorama, this, 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 this kaleidoscope of different views of Jesus, of how they encountered Jesus after he rose from the dead. And there are different degrees of belief and disbelief. But one of the things that seems to be common to the synoptic evangelists, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, is that the disciples very early on are filled with a joy and exuberance and confidence that, that they, they, they share with one another and use to bolster one another's faith and, and, and confidence. And it's kind of ironic that in the Gospel of John, we don't see that. We see that even though he appears to the ten in the upper room, and they seem to be excited, they aren't excited enough to break out of the locked doors and to go out into the public and proclaim the Lord's presence, his resurrection, his power, his glory. They're still timorous. They're still afraid. They're still shying away from the complete fullness of the promise. And I think that's why Thomas would not believe when they told him that they'd seen the Lord because they didn't show the evidence of it. They didn't show the witness of it. They didn't show the power of that presence at work in their lives. And so he says, I can't believe, I won't believe unless I see with my own eyes and put my fingers into the nail marks in his hands and my hand in the wound at his side, I can't believe. So Jesus appears and he comes to me. I think that the story of Thomas on this Divine Mercy Sunday is really a story for our times as well. We're gathered here, the nine of us as, as believers, to witness to our faith. Other people in other churches and other small groups around the world gather to witness to their faith. But it's what we do with that witness what we do with that faith, how we take it out into the community, how we witness to it by what we say and do out there that makes believers out of others. We need to be 
strong in our convictions, firm in our witness to the faith, so that others may come to believe as Thomas came to believe, that the risen Lord is Lord and God, and that through him we have life in his name.